knobs that need to be turned to figure out how can we really keep people safe. Wildfires ravage San Diego year after year, leading to devastating, dangerous, and deadly consequences. We don't really think about the air that we're breathing that much, um, but it, it is a huge determinant of our health. Around the world, um, air pollution exposure is one of the leading causes of sickness and death. Nationwide, wildfire season is getting longer and more intense, exposing Americans to record-breaking amounts of wildfire-related smoke. According to Professor Tracy Holloway from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, who studies air quality. I got into this as something that was a way to connect science with issues that people care about, our health, our energy systems. Whether it's wood, vegetation, or family homes burning, wildfires emit chemicals into the air. Nitrogen oxides are coming off, volatile organic compounds, carbon monoxide, and particles. We inhale these invisible particles and breathe in these gases without even knowing it. It's associated with respiratory disease, cardiovascular disease, shortened life outcomes. It, of course, depends on how big the blaze is and how sensitive your health may be. But our expert says even being exposed to wildfire smoke for one day can cause damage. It's more this idea that's not everybody will get sick from every wildfire, but some people will get sick. And the smoke can travel thousands of miles. Professor Holloway also leads a team at NASA that helps make satellite data more relevant when it comes to decision making on air quality and our health. You may remember last year, wildfires burning in Canada turned New York a burnt orange. So the idea that smoke from Canada could affect, you know, Southern California um, may be surprising, but when you see it from space and you can trace the plume going the whole way, it really is as clear as day. The Environmental Protection Agency makes monitoring our air quality easy, though. In your smartphone's weather app, it shows the air quality index. Green is good, yellow, moderate. Orange means unhealthy for sensitive groups like children, the elderly, and people with pre-existing conditions like asthma. If you see red, it means the air is unhealthy for everyone. Maroon and purple, even worse. Since the Clean Air Act in 1970 and before that in California, um, measures have been in place to make our air cleaner and cleaner. And except for wildfires, it's been a good news story. Our air has been getting cleaner for every chemical for most places. Um, so I think the, the, the challenge is how do we uh, update and respond to these, this, these sources that are beyond our control? On days when the air quality is bad, head to a safe indoor space. If not at home, something like a cooling center or the public library that can provide filtered air. If it is uh, smoky outside, then a good stra strategy is to stay inside. And air conditioning is really effective at filtering out ozone, which is one of the invisible gases that we're concerned about. Um, and indoor air purifiers are a great way to filter out um, particulate matter. And those masks we're all too familiar with now are also effective in protecting your lungs. For CBS 8, I'm Jenny Day.